Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the revenge bedtime procrastination, or as some people they call it, sleep procrastination. And also towards the end, I will be giving you a few tips on how to deal with this sort of issue. And maybe in comment section, you can let me know if you actually heard of this term before, the revenge bedtime procrastination. And also for the purpose of this video to make it more bearable, I'm gonna be using abbreviation RBP. Revenge bedtime procrastination, it is fairly new term and became more popular around COVID and was initiated in China where people, they work long hours and sometimes they refer to that as 996, means they work from nine till nine, six days a week. RBP was explained that when people they work such a hectic schedule as 996, they have no time to relax, no time for leisure, no time to meet with friends or family. So when eventually they get home, when they are supposed to go to bed and sleep because the next day they need to get up really early, they actually stay up till late. So in a way they're taking revenge on a busy day so that they can wind down, maybe they can relax, and maybe they can also regulate their emotions and maybe they can also have that sense of control over their life. However, this is done at the expense of their sleep. If you're suspecting that you are experiencing RBP, you can ask yourself these three questions. Are you delaying your bedtime that is causing you then to be short on sleep? Is there any valid reason why you're staying up late at night? Do you have the full awareness of the negative consequences of you staying up till late at night? RBP can actually take different forms. For some people it might be that when is the bedtime they're becoming really active. They clean the house, they cook, maybe they call friends, maybe they play games. For someone else it might be that they actually are already in bed but then they're laying, they sleep by using their phone for maybe next two, three hours. Although RBP, it is a fairly new concept, we already have some research within the area and we know that people who sleep procrastinate, they actually want to sleep, but they, for some reason, they cannot get to the habit of going to sleep on time. We can explain that some people, when they have extremely busy schedule and they have no time to relax throughout the day, and the only time that they have for themselves, it is the time at night when they're supposed to sleep, they use this time to, for instance, regulate the emotions or maybe to recover from very stressful day at work. And then we have night owls, people who are more productive and active at night. And it is possible that their work schedule is just not well adjusted to their natural needs of sleep. We also know from research that people who are more prone to RBP are, for instance, students, women, people who recognize themselves as night owls and people who tend to procrastinate more in other aspects of their life. Additionally, we know that RBP is definitely linked to elevated stress and really hectic work schedules. And then what has happened during COVID was that many people actually worked from home while trying to juggle other things like kids, and the household activities. And then as a result of that, they actually ended up working longer hours. And that then led them to maybe having very little time to relax or maybe even having no time to relax. And this might be the reason why RBP became a more popular topic during COVID. When RBP becomes a daily habit, that then creates a risk of you becoming sleep deprived. And we know that as healthy adults, we need about seven to nine hours of sleep every night. Being sleep deprived can cause us to have poor concentration, can definitely impact our memory, our decision making will be compromised, and in general, our cognitive functioning will be slowed down. Additionally, as a result of lack of sleep, we can become more depressed and anxious, more stressed, frustrated. When RBP becomes a chronic issue, this can actually cause us a serious physical health issues such as uh, heart diseases, obesity, diabetes, and also our immune system can be compromised. When we become chronically sleep deprived, that can actually become a risk factor for us to develop depression, anxiety. And in some cases, people, they might as well struggle with sleep paralysis 
and if you haven't heard of this term before then i recommend you to go and watch one of my videos where i talk in detail about sleep paralysis so now that we know all the research and you've established that you're actually struggling with the revenge bedtime procrastination what to do about it so one of the first things that you will have to do is to develop a better sleep hygiene but again that's not going to happen overnight it's going to be a gradual process one of the things that really helped me personally to deal with my on and off sleep procrastination was to actually put a label to my behavior and just realize yes uh, it is actually sleep procrastination because i had a really hectic day i had no time to relax so from then on i may make sure that from 10 to 11 o'clock it is my time when I relax, when I don't do any work. For you, this might mean that you might have to reevaluate your schedule and maybe even cut down on your work so you can actually fit some time for yourself when you can relax before going to bed. Another aspect of good sleep hygiene to help you deal with RBP is to make sure that you have very regular sleep schedule even on weekends. It is also recommended not to have any caffeinated drinks later in the afternoon and also it is not recommended to have alcohol or maybe a huge meal just before going to bed. Research also recommends not to use your mobile phones a few hours before going to bed but I guess even if you could manage 30 or 40 minutes without your phone before bed I think that would be already quite good. Having a good bedtime routine is really important not only for children so when we say to kids change into your pajamas, brush your teeth, the same goes for adults, it's also really important for us to have those little steps that we go through before we actually end up in bed. Also something as simple as making sure that you have clean bed sheets, that the room where you sleep is fairly dark, can also contribute to you actually having a better sleep routine and reducing the RBP. If you would like to learn more about sleep hygiene and sleep deprivation then you can visit my youtube channel and go to the folder sleep where you can find whole selection of different videos where i talk about those topics that will be it for today and if you enjoyed this video then please like it subscribe and i'm gonna see you in the next one then thank you bye bye